नमस्ते एवरीबॉडी जॉय मा का मख्या दिस विल बी फॉर नाउ द थर्ड वीडियो इन द सीरीज ऑफ मां दुर्गा उपासना विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द नवरात्रस एंड विल एड्रेस सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू एड्रेस ऑल द क्वेश्चंस एंड सम ऑफ देम एक्चुअली हैव आल्सो बीन एड्रेस्ड इन प्रीवियस वीडियोस ऑन द अनुष्ठान सो यू माइट वांट टू चेक दोस आउट एज वेल Okay. Uh, before we uh, carry on, uh, I did mention that the option of Homa, Tarpan, etc. is there. So if you know, then only you do. If you don't know, skip those. Just do Parayana, just do part of those 32 names. That is also very powerful. So everything cannot be explained over a video or, uh, you know, in these kind of uh, setups at the moment. And neither does everybody need to do all the processes right at the beginning. So this, uh, there is this sense of... Um, so this discrimination should be there properly inside ki uh, what is it that you should do of all the things that i'm saying what is possible for you to do do that and what is not possible skip that okay so understand that homa is a very powerful process it is not to be done randomly there is a not only the i'm not even talking about the vidhan of doing a homa whether it is the vaidika puranika or the tantric method of doing a homa all of them are fine all of them work but it is important that uh, if you already know how to do it then only use if you do not know then randomly say if you don't if you have never done this uh, 32 names of madurga and you have never done a homa and you just try to experiment on the first day that is a very bad idea do it slowly just do the parayan only if you are accustomed to doing devata homas if you know the paddhati you have a basic idea then also first do uh, uh, the part of the text for some period of time before you go into doing homas with it okay the information i provide here is for a wide range of people each one has to decide based on where exactly they are what is the level of their knowledge how much practice they have done with this in order to understand whether they should directly jump into it or not or which part of the advice or the sadhana is suitable for them at this moment this is this discrimination should be internal okay because it's not possible to tailor make the message for every individual because those who are listening there's a all sorts of all kinds of people will be there now suppose somebody already knows how to do homas okay uh, then the question comes if you know how to do uh, homas then the idea is it is a very simple idea and it comes from the tantra shastras and the mantra shastras all the texts tell you the same basic idea that homa sh should be done as one tenth the shangsh homa it is called so whatever uh, amount of japa you have done one tenth of that will come into the homa process okay uh, so basically if you have done uh, say uh, somebody had um, give send a question basically so if you are doing 108 uh, 108 part for 9 days and that comes to about 972 part in 9 days so the homa has to be 1/10 which is 97.2 so whenever there's a fraction take it as the next one 93 so 93 times the stotra has to be given as ahuti in the fire only if you know how to do the homa if you don't know homa if you don't know tarpana don't bother about it in one day you cannot make the jump this thing has to be done slowly okay i give this information so that later on suppose you start this sadhana now you continue for periods of time you later on learn how to do these things then you want to try this then only it becomes useful or just keep doing parayan of the text that's it number 2 regarding the bali it is again not compulsory at all if you want to do you can do if you don't want to do don't do okay the important thing remember in the different limbs of upasana the most fundamental is doing either stotra part parayan or japa of the mantra that is step 1 okay that is irreplaceable and uh, homa tarpan etc these are auxiliary parts of the mantra sadhana or any devata upasana that come in only later on okay after you first do sufficient amount of japa parayan etc then those things come in into play because then the mantra or the stotra is working through the different um, tatvas basically and activating through there that that's how it it was designed that way it's a very powerful way of doing sadhana no doubt but only once you learn how to do it 
if you're starting initially don't think of going right right away to that step first just keep doing the sadhana for sufficient period of time just reading spending at least you know 30 minutes to an hour every day and doing parayana of the text doing reading of those 32 names if madurga upasana is what you want to do okay uh some people asked what should be done with the lemon no don't consume it throw it away after i mean after you scoop out the thing don't don't consume anything of it just just you can dispose it of later on okay uh third point some there were some questions regarding uh, for women doing the sadhana during periods i have already addressed what needs to be done uh, in one of the previous videos on anushthan should see those videos and that applies as a general rule for all everybody who's uh question who has this question regarding what to do if we are doing any mantra sadhana any devata upasana or any anushthana during uh, periods so in this uh, there is also a specific point that comes in that what if there is an ashocha that happens due to birth or death okay when you are doing an anushthana uh here the texts are clear about two things if you have a guru diksha uh first of all if you have a initiation you should ask your guru he or she is the first point of contact don't take judge don't make judgments based on anything that you hear otherwise number 2 ideal course the text will tell you that if you are in a sankalpa if you are doing an anushthan then even if there is uh, any kind of ashocha regarding birth or death you still have to continue doing it whereas if you are doing it normally uh if you are doing generic upasana a person who is doing generic upasana he uh, generic upasana means as uh, casually you do the sadhana um, of deities at home or whatever depending on the different festivals uh, etc you are doing in that circumstance you can skip doing for the period of time there is an asocha in the family where there is a death in the of somebody which requires stopping of pujas for a certain period of time in any case if you do it then there's 10 other people who will say you know various things however if you have a initiation and if you are doing something based on sankalpa then it is good to finish the sankalpa in whatever way possible okay this has to be an individual's judgment what is possible and what is not <clears throat> uh there is a question regarding durga saptashati or chandi part whether one can do this with whether one can do the chandi part uh, during this uh, you know uh, sadhana etc uh, okay before that let me say the questions there are also repeatedly uh, some questions regarding other deities those will be covered later on as the inspiration comes i'll do them so there is understand that these videos are done more in a very free flowing manner as i feel an inspiration to do it is not subject to a question or b question or this topic or that topic etc at this moment we have the navratri so the questions will uh, more or less uh, the videos are more or less focused on basic devi upasana not even complicated ones so when it comes to the chandi part or the uh, <clears throat> durga saptashati it is a 13th chapter text that comes from the markandeya purana uh, the chapter describes each of the chapters describe uh, the battles that goddess durga or chandika chandika is one of the most ferocious forms of ma durga and has with various asuric forces and um, in different kalpas in different types of asuras from mahisasur to shumbha nishumbha and various other forms and the emergence of kali emergence of chamunda emergence of uh, various other matrika forces etc so this is a text of a divine battle that is going on where the gods were not able to contain the asuric forces so they appeared together and the forces and the shaktis of the devatas combined together and form the adi shakti durga and it is a text of tremendous importance in shakti upasana tremendous importance and uh, it is so powerful and important that not only in the tantra sampradayas but even in the vedic sampradayas the worship of devi mahatyam of, uh, of the worship of devi durga through the um, uh, through this text to the chandi part uh, including homas etc is very regularly done so the 
the Mula Grantha, the 13 chapters of the text come from the Purana. Along with it, there are six angas or limbs of it. Three in the beginning, three at the end. There is the Kavacha, Kilaka, Suktams, then there is um, and um, Argala, etc. At the end, uh, it has uh, the three Rahasyas or mis you know, uh, decoding of the various spiritual mysteries that are there in the form of Mahadevi and the different goddesses that appear, different forms that the mother takes, the divine mother takes in various chapters of the text. All these two, together with some other mantra sadhana, when combined together, these, these limbs of the text, by the way, do not come from the Markandeya Puran, they come from the Tantras, around uh, 12, I think, uh, 10th, 11th century, the Tantras that were composed from that period of time, mention the text very clearly and recommend uh, Parayana, uh, Homa, Sadhana of this text, along with all these limbs, etc. And the various Paddhatis to be adopted. And this is considered to be so powerful, so potent, that rightly done, this text can cause incredible amount of changes in the surroundings, uh, remove Groha Doshas, stop enemies, uh, bring about prosperity, various things, innumerable benefits and it's repeated across the various tantras. So it is important to understand here that when you are doing Parayana of the text, reading this text, you are not reading a Purana. You have to read along with it the various limbs of the text, uh, follow the Paddhatis that are mentioned in the tantras. Only then this whole text becomes what is called a Mala Mantra. A Mala Mantra is a very technical term for a specific type of mantra of a devata and the deity here is Chandika. The moment this becomes a text of the tantras, the first basic rule is that you will need to have upadesham or initiation from a guru before you can actually use this text for your own sadhana. This is the first basic rule and it is important to mention because unfortunately there are way too many people I see that who have uh, who do or have done um, or keep doing uh, para and our reading of the text in the most casual manner and uh, believe that it is um, you know only doing it through bhakti is good enough uh, in my opinion that is uh, that is a flawed perspective it is better if you want to do the sadhana better to find a guru better to find connect to one of the sampradayas and take an initiation and this initiation can even be given by the Vedic Sampradayas, by the way. Uh, so because this is such a popular upasana that it is done even in the uh, in the Advaitic Sampradayas, uh, even in various, many, across the India. Almost everybody has adopted this, the Durga, Shapta Shati and uh, its uh, upasana, Paddhatis, once in a while, at least once a year, certain places, certain very old traditional mathas make sure that humas are done of this text. The reason why Diksha is important here is that uh, first of all the text, 70% of the text is actually very graphic description of warfare. Uh, it is, it is, it defines how the goddesses and the various shaktis clashed with the asuras and how they destroyed one after the other and there are descriptions for example in one chapter you will have the matrika shaktis drinking blood and dancing to the battle drums of the uh, during the war that happens, etc. So a text that has such terrific veerrasa, great amount of, uh, you know, that, that courage and that valor, that shatri of hava inside that text, is mainly invoked, used to be at least, maybe a century or so earlier, used to be invoked when there is a tremendous amount of badha or obstacle that is there, that needs to be removed. And it assumes that the Upasaka of this form of the mother, of Chandika, also has that kind of inner strength, that steadiness inside. You must think and work like that kind of a, um, uh, you know, that, uh, for lack of better words, that ability to hold that power and not flinch. Okay, One of the, one of the best qualities of a Kshatriya is that somebody who can handle pain. So that quality has to be there in somebody. If you keep doing this text over and over, and it is wonderful text, so you have to know these basics. You have to know if this is the sadhana you want to do. 
as a sadhana later on. So you have to be clear that this is a text of warfare, that energy is of Rana Chandiga, okay? the goddess of war, she is the, of all forms, she is the mother of war. Without her, there is no victory ever, whether it is a physical war, whether, whether it's an internal war, etc. So you must have that kind of a psychological makeup if this is the text that you feel is going to benefit you most. Just do not start doing it because you see 10 other people doing it. And that is rampant across a uh, lot of places I've seen. Uh, this is not the way ideally to do the text. And it does not matter whether you, what you feel, etc. That is, leave that aside. Dharma is what comes from the traditions and the texts. Okay. It is not based on your liking, disliking, etc. Uh, and I repeat this once again, which I've repeated before. And I've told this innumerable number of times. The Upasana will bring results provided you follow the rules given by the traditions. If you violate the rules, then it can produce a pratikriya, a reaction. You may or may not be able to judge that reaction. Sometimes it may come in some other area of your life. Okay. So, ideal course, the best option is if you want to do the sadhana, find a guru, take an initiation. Now, second thing that comes along with the Durga Saptashati is the Navarna Mantra that is an integral part of the text Upasana. So Navarna is a very powerful mantra. It is so powerful that it can perhaps give you, it contains within it the powers of Mahalakshmi, Mahakali, Mahasaraswati as also the, the form of Chamunda which is perhaps the heart of Chandika. The form of Chamunda appears um, in th I think in the seventh chapter of the Devi of the Durga part of Chandi part, where Kali takes the form of Chamunda. Chamunda is extremely fierce goddess, very very fierce blood drinking goddess. Make no mistake about it. If Chamunda is properly invoked, it is a it is a she is a deity of war, absolute war. She used to be one of the forms widely worshipped in the era when the Kshatriyas were powerfully in control and dharmically aligned. So, uh, Navarna is a very powerful mantra. Navarna Upasana is extremely good. But here too, it is the same rules that apply. If you want to really progress in the Navarna Upasana, take an advice or an initiation from somewhere. And there are a lot of places in India these days. Things are much easier today. It's easy to get this information. It is easy to go meet, uh, you know, interact with gurus and ashrams, etc. Where you can get an initiation. They can tell you the rules to be followed, etc. Now suppose you have, I always insist and I'll always in future insist that whenever there is a rule given in the Shastras that this requires an initiation then you go ahead and take that initiation. Don't do things or don't base it on that I have been doing this and somebody told me this. All that is up to you, your responsibility. You do what you want but this is what the Vidhan is. If you follow, do not follow the Vidhan then it can produce some reaction. See it is there is a reason why a particular paddhati or a method has been um, given and followed for centuries and centuries and that has produced the best results. If it could be done without an initiation, they would have already mentioned it. Okay, Perhaps there is a risk involved and perhaps the reaction to these sometimes come in areas of life which you, unless you have a very subtle mind, unless there is a great discrimination power, you will not understand where the... Um, reaction is coming so in that case bottom line is that if you want to do Navarno Upasana get an initiation and then do it it is a very powerful mantra it is a terrific mantra there is no doubt about it and if you and relatively speaking this mantra has lesser rules than some of the Mahavidya mantras but the benefits it gives can be very very powerful very powerful uh, <clears throat> First, obviously, that when you are doing the Navarna, you should not chant the Pranava at the beginning. That is that that holds back the Shakti of the mantra. Ideal course in the tantras are very clear that this mantra is only nine aksharas and there is no Pranava in it. Secondly, if somebody does, uh, suppose somebody has an initiation. So this part is only for people if you have an initiation to the Navarna and what to do, how to do it. So there are two ways in which it is approached. Uh, in a large number of sampradayas 
one is that you combine the navarna with the durga part okay so both of them are complementary to each other both of them will help to increase the power of the other so you do the navarna either to use the durga part for some uh, some application of power some shakti some prayoga or some kind of a, uh, some benefit uh, or for the sadhana or your mool sadhana is actually navarna mantra along with it you still have to do the parayana of the text of durga part so these two go sort of hand in hand okay so you have to know the paddhati of doing either this or and how how to approach both <clears throat> navarna mantra requires about 9 lakhs of japa for the mantra purushan and it has to be done not once but multiple times it produces very powerful results as mentioned but it is not to be tried randomly it should be ideally done uh, if you want the right results that is very important see i have i have seen people who have been chanting i don't know maybe on their own or just heard from somewhere etc or reading the durga part regularly uh, and i have seen them doing it thousands of times but the results that have come are not even a hundredth fraction of the result that is mentioned in the tantras so tantras are clear that if you do the durga part Uh, if you do so many times the durga part this result will come if you do so many times this result will come if you do thousand times the durga part it brings terrific tremendous amount of power generation is happening huge shakti is created the mother's blessing comes and exceptional things can happen but there are people who have done i have seen who have been doing the durga part the chandi part for um years and years they have crossed the 1000 mark long back and not even a fraction of the result has manifested in their lives all these things happen because first thing is that is it being done as per the vidhan is it being done as per the right process is the traditional mark systems followed if you tamper with the process then all these results all these are off limits then to whether a result will come or not come what will happen it's up to you then nobody knows anything so that is why it is important to follow the tradition and in fact that is also why one of the reasons for the initiation to be taken so that at least somebody competent can advise you the do's don'ts etc how to go about this sadhana though let me say that just initiation is also not enough okay there are many people with initiation who have done this and yet may not experience it so easily it's not there are other processes other things that come into play but initiation is one of the first primary things uh so navarna mantra if it is suppose somebody has the initiation and if somebody does 9 lakhs japa of the mantra 9 lakhs is the count and uh, it is so powerful that even without a homa or the tarpana or the marjana or the auxiliary processes if 9 lakhs japa is done with sankalpa and certain other rules of related to this it causes a very strong transformative effect but remember this thing she is a goddess of war so that kind of energy will enter into your life you cannot chicken out in the middle and say that oh this is some conflict is happening and this and happening that is happening etc if there are certain tendencies in the individual for that type of upasana then go ahead you have to be very clear about it it is it it will bring an upsurge of tremendous kshatriya force inside your mind and body you have to be able to ready to handle that you have to keep control of anger you have to keep control of lust with brahmacharya these things will come into play very strongly otherwise the energy that you generate is going to leak out completely anger is one of the first things okay and then brahmacharya etc uh, so do not jump into it just because it is fashionable and lot of people say that it is wonderful so let's just do the mantra not like that do it in a way which is to be done so that it benefits you so that the efforts you are putting actually brings about some results in a in a span of time whether it's 3 years 4 years etc otherwise if you violate the rules then you can carry on for 30 years and 300 years also you will not get results but there is a reason why the rules were there because that is what works best remember this thing that these rules were set in place by people 
of far greater caliber than you and me. Okay, if they knew a better way that without these rules it can be result can be attained, they would have done it. So after Navarna, so that is why uh, the there are certain other nuances of the Navarna Sadhana Upasana. Uh, in fact, uh, relatively it's easier than Mahavidya Sadhana's Navarna Sadhana. Uh, but remember this, that basic idea has to be clear, that what kind of a Devata she is, what kind of power surge, what kind of Shakti sh you are calling into your life. If you are comfortable, then only go ahead with it, Okay, if you have the initiation. And that is why the brilliance of the Rishi is that all kinds of forms have been given to us. There is uh, extremes of Ma Durga is there, Chamunda is there, Kali is there. On the other hand, there is Lakshmi also, there is Saraswati also. So you decide what is suitable for you. Ideally, this should be decided by the Guru. But these days, two things have become a little more twisted, in fact. Everything is out in the open and nobody actually knows what is the right way of doing things, which is very unfortunate. Now suppose somebody doesn't have Diksha, so how, how do we do Upasana of Ma Kali or Ma Durga for that matter during any of the Navratris? Uh, one is of course the 32 names of the uh, Dwatrim Shati Namavali of Ma Durga that you can do, I mentioned in the previous videos. The other thing to do is, and this comes from the Devi Bhagavad Puran, uh, it mentions that during the Navratris and any of the Navratris, eat less fast if possible if not uh, you know reduce the quantity of food you are taking uh, establish a ghatta if agar if kalash thapan is not possible then just keep chanting the first line of the argala sutra first line of the argala sutra jayanti mangala kali that line that line does not need any initiation because those are names of the mother very precious powerful names of the mother anybody can keep chanting that that requires no initiation. Keep doing it. Yes. The volume of japa, the volume of chanting has to be sufficient. Only then it will bring results. And you have to carry on for, uh, not just in the Navaratris, but also for years. It definitely has a positive impact. So that is one one of the lines. And it's very popularly used across uh, all lot of temples and lot of pujas. That one line you will find. Jayanti Mangala Kali, Bhadra Kali Kapalini, that full sloka that you can find on the internet also. That can be used as a base for doing japa and it needs no initiation. So these things that are already given to us, if somebody works on that itself, following the rules of sadhana and carries on for a few years, you are bound to see some positive developments and results. There is no doubt about it. One need not always think of doing the most complicated process. Go ahead and do if you want to do something complicated, but do it in the way it is to be done, with the right diksha, initiation, guidance and the methods that are prescribed. Only do it. Or do those sadhanas which not need initiation. They also will produce results. It's up to you how diligently you can do it, how long you can carry how how good you are in following the rules and how strongly you are able to carry on the sadhana for years. It's based on this that finally the results will come to an individual. With that, I think for now I'll end the series on Madhurga and uh, I'll see you again later. Wish everybody has a very fruitful, auspicious Navratri. Joy Makamakya.